Thank you for praying with us today. If I look a little dizzier than normal, it's because I am. I had cataract surgery in both of my eyes a few weeks ago, and I'm still in the healing process. And these don't work very well anymore, but help is on the way. First of all, let me acknowledge those who have significant jubilees this year. Monsignor James Androsco, he's exercising his retirement well, being in Arizona this time of year. Sacred Heart Father Bernie Rosinski, 60 years both. And then celebrating 50 years as Father Roger Gaditz, who's here, and Father John Rasmussen, and Father Ramos, A.W. Ramos. Let's congratulate them on these significant anniversaries. Let me begin by saying, quite frankly, I did not expect to be your bishop for this Mass. <laughs> Having, as church law requires, submitted my resignation last September. This is not a lament for me, for I'm grateful to the Lord for allowing me for nearly 13 years and counting to be the bishop of Sioux Falls. This time has challenged me and challenged you, and I part of that, reason for that, has tested my faith, has educated me on what I view as the powerful ethic of life on the prairie, a way of life which sadly is at risk from natural and man-made forces. That's a topic for another day. The Chrism Mass has several interrelated spiritual threads that should sustain us in our priesthood as instruments of God's love and mercy the affirmation of our priestly promises, which affirms our acceptance despite individual failings of the hierarchical structure of the church which Christ himself instituted. And secondly, the blessing and consecration of the holy oils, which affirms that God has given us the grace-filled yet mysterious tools to welcome and attend to those we are called to shepherd. The prayers for the blessing of the oil of the sick and catechumens, as well as the consecration of chrism oil, have been revised with the approval of the Holy See and will be prayed here for the first time today. And the former formal order for these blessings and consecration contains these explanations. For the blessing of the oil of the sick, St. James bears witness to the use of the oil of the sick. He offers a sick a remedy, it offers the sick a remedy for infirmity of body and soul so that they can bravely endure and fight against evils and obtain pardon for their sins. For the blessing of the oil of catechumens, the oil of catechumens extends the effect of the baptismal exorcism. It strengthens the candidate with the power to renounce the devil and sin before they go to the fount of life for rebirth. For the consecration of the chrism. Sacred chrism shows that through baptism, Christians have been incorporated into the paschal mystery of Christ. Having died, been buried, and risen with him, they are sharers in this kingly and prophetic priesthood. Through confirmation, they are given the spiritual anointing of the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to reflect on these new translations. First, though, Allow me to acknowledge the challenging times we are living in as clergy, religious, and laity. These are difficult times in the church, which you especially know so well. It can lead to discouragement, dispiritedness, even anger. As I wrote in my recent statement, though, I must note that the vast majority of clergy have not violated their promise of chastity or their moral duty to protect children. Unfortunately, a cloud does hang over us all. So I offer my fraternal gratitude for their, for your persevering during this heavy time. And I reaffirm that gratitude. We deserve, as church, to be held to account, as painful as that is. Atonement is right and just. 
Our uncomfortable feelings pale in comparison to victims of child abuse in all its forms and forums. Prayers for their healing are essential. Let us not, however, allow the forces of evil to lead us off course, for Christ is the same, the same yesterday, today, and forever, despite what fallen instruments of him, including we bishops, might do or not do well. In a few minutes, we will affirm our ordination promises. Picture that happy day in your minds for you and the joy that it was, and allow its memory to lift you up. Christ's call has not changed. As someone said, a vocation is a calling from God with our name on it. Thanks for saying, here I am, Lord. Send me. Archbishop Charles Sapoub, formerly Bishop of Rapid City, and so he knows South Dakota well, recently spoke at the Josephinum Seminary, and he entitled his words, Facing the Future with Hope and Joy. He said, I chose tonight's theme because it sounds better than facing the future with confusion and anxiety, even anger for that matter, because I feel all three of those a couple of times every week. So do I. He quoted another as defining hope as despair overcome. Certainly, that is the teaching of Holy Week, the despair of the disciples, with Peter's denial, Judas's betrayal, and Jesus' suffering, followed by the scattering of the rest out of fear, except for John, who stayed by the side of the sorrowful Blessed Mother. On Easter Day, we once again experience despair overcome. The truth is that there are signs of hope and joy all around us in the people who we are called to shepherd, but who, in fact, in many ways, are shepherding us in their own ways. How moving it was just a few weeks ago when here in this cathedral, the relic of the uncorrupted heart of St. John Vianney, patron of the clergy, was venerated by over 3,000 people on relatively short notice. And I led the Stations of the Cross that night with the largest number of prayers that I've ever experienced before. Catholic school masses, confirmations, March for Life, First Communions, Newman Centers are all signs of hope. I'm always moved when I read letters from those asking to be confirmed by the number of young people who say that they first encountered adoration at youth ministry programs and how much that quiet time with Jesus meant to them and changed them. Old folks like me ought to follow their example, not the other way around so much. I encourage all of us to look around and note those signs of hope in our lives and our parishes they're there. Archbishop Chaput concluded his thoughts with these words, this isn't a dark time unless we make it so. We're simply back again in the night before the resurrection. The night passes and we already know how the story ends. This is a moment of privilege and opportunity, not defeat. We've been given the gift of being part of God's world to rebuild and build better the witness of his church in the world. So let's pray, he concluded, for each other and thank God for each other and lift up our hearts to pursue the mission and create the future that God intends. We begin today by reaffirming our ordination promises.
invite the priest to stand. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be, to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards the Christ church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites? and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. As for you, dear sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me by my, in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen.
O God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil and all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, that they, they may undertake with generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Please stand. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O oh God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the church joyfully offers to you through your voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all of this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You set the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased with him, your only begotten son. 
and you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil and its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit. With the powerful working of your Christ, from this holy name it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through the anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal priesthood and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil of the chrism of salvation for those born again in water and the Holy Spirit and may it make clean partakers of eternal life and shares in the heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 